So what drives us? You know, how do we work this? How, how do we? What what do we do in these companies? If, if let's say Magna went up from being 180 crores to 400 crores in size, changed when we bought the company, the DSO was 120 days. Now it's come down to 70 days. So if you say 50 days of DSO, what happens? Correct. What does cash? What what does it mean to the company? If you say 50 days of DSO. Well, capital comes down. We have that much more free cash in the company. So, if, assuming the company was doing, let's say, 30 crores of sales in a month, two months sales you get back from the company, 60 crores of cash you have back in the company. So, managing working capital cycles and you know ensuring you got you get more cash into the company is a very significant thing. You know. So, how do we do these things? The first one, I like to have two parts in this discussion: is how we work, and the second one is. You know, what is the culture? How do we do, you know, what are the things we do there? And this is more from another, another point of view about why we do these things. So first thing that we do is that we are very sales led in our, in, our, in our focus. We try and develop strong sales team, sales collaterals, sales processes, sales review. So sales is a very important part of our internal exercise. We want to get out to market. We want to reach them as much as possible. The second one is margin protection. <coughs> You know, five, six years back, I invested in this company in 2009. When, we when I invested in 2009, we were, I think we were less than 1%. It was a frightening situation. I mean, it also was in the bad days, you know, post Lehman Brothers, and it was, the company was making loss of maybe one crore a month or something of that type. Then we slowly pulled it back. But from 1%, today we've grown to 6.2%. Our target is to reach 8%. So margin expansion is a constant theme. Uh, many companies chase this, you know, many companies, good, good, well-informed, evolved companies having been through cash flow cycles do this. We've been fortunate at, very, at a very early stage of our evolution development to have realized this. For this consciousness to have come inside, you know, of the need to be cash, to be cash flow sensitive and to have margin expansion all the time. So this is a, this is a key, one of the uh, important induction points for senior management joining a company is always margins, sales and margins. It's all the time, it, it's, it's a language that we talk all the time to our people. The third point is, uh, uh, is to attract and uh, get skilled people in our company. We, we want to hire the best talent, uh, people like all of you sitting here in this room, uh, good educational background, uh, with a desire to, to work hard and make something out of your life. You know? We want to get people for whom the job is important for whom uh, they'd like to stay for some time and, and create something out of their jobs, you know. We were recently having a long service award in our company. And uh, we had five year awards being given. So in the first two years, this company had really about 150 people or so. So in this long service award, we had almost 50 people who served five years in the company, 50, 60 people. So it meant to say that almost about one half the company were there at the beginning. It's still there even now. You know, in a country that sees how much attrition? 70%, sometimes in IT industries, 30%. You know, is the attrition rate. So it's important to keep people, and we've been very fortunate in being able to keep people. Productivity improvement and operational efficiency. You know, we DSO is, is just one example of operational efficiency. And improvement is metrics. How do you improve a DSO? How do you, what goes into improving a DSO? How do we do it? Yeah, but you know, you can bargain, but he has to still pay you, no? How will you get the payment out of the client? Incentives for the employees, yeah. Most often, most often, the problem with uh, collections is not, is not of the client and it's with you. Your invoices are not correct. So you don't send an invoice correctly, it's, it has to be corrected and sent back. You lose one week for that. The second point is that the invoices don't, so invoices are not correct because of the time and material effort. You know, how much time is there in the invoice and how much material you put down for what is consumed is wrong you put. Second one is that it doesn't confirm the contract. That it's not in the format and it's not in the manner that the client will accept it easily. So you've got to correct it to the contract form. Third one is there's no follow-up. You send the client, you made a wager. My, 
get my table, but you know, you don't follow up. You got to phone the guy, follow up. Fourth one is you have to be predictive. If there's a holiday is coming, you got to know that there is a holiday coming and then ensure that this is collected in time. So these are, these, these, are, these are small things, but these are very key things, very important things, you know, to ensure that you get collections. That is what is the fourth point, continuous efficiency, or continuous improvement in efficiency. How do you collect faster? How do you build better? And that's, how, that's what goes into getting your DSO right. Lastly, you know, la the fifth point is actually about governance. When you're running an office with 90,000 people involved, there are huge touch points. You have to collect the salary for all these people. You have to collect the attendance data for all these people. Make the payroll, process salary, collect the cash from the client before you pay the salary sometimes or you know, uh, ensure your working capital is sufficiently there to ensure it goes on time. Pay provident fund, pay income tax, pay ESI, pay service tax, pay professional tax. Professional tax is a state level subject. So, if you are paying 10 rupees in Delhi, it can be 100 rupees in, in Bangalore. So you've got to be aligned state by state. So there's a lot of governance related issues. You know, these are all, it's not just, it's not just payroll. At a larger level, this is regulatory and governance. So we keep investing constantly to ensure we get this right. We've implemented SAP across our group uh, for human resources and for uh, payroll and financial services. So every time we do an acquisition, we get to run the company on a SAP platform.